Greetings builders and welcome to the third part of our top 12 builds for the Trivedan Sessions League. If you missed parts 1 and 2, don't worry, you can find our links together with the POBs and complete guides for all those builds in the video description. Let's start this video with a build that is in my opinion the best one for beginners and got the 6th place on our list, the Arc Totem's Hierophant with the Templar class. On this build we use many totems that cast the arc skill for a fast and safe clear speed. Listen the pros of this build, I would start with how cheap and easy it is to complete your atlas using this beauty. With almost no investment you have a powerful, safe and fast character that will be the perfect currency farmer for this and future builds. Now to list the cons, this build doesn't have access to evasion or spell suppression, but don't worry, totem builds are very safe to play. Another issue is that some players might find this gameplay to be a little tedious and too easy, but as you know, this is just a matter of taste. As for budget, you can get it destroying early endgame maps with only around 35 chaos. To comfort play advanced to yellow maps, you need to invest around 90 chaos, and for easily completing your atlas, I recommend investing around 3 divines, but you can totally do it with less. Don't forget that on poebuilds.net you can find a list with all the equipment that you need to buy for this build, with direct links for examples being sold by other players. This build needs 3 mandatory unique items, but they are normally very cheap and easy to get. The first one is the Soul Mental Armor, that causes Sokada Gems to be supported by a level 20 spell totem. This grants us an extra support skill gem. We also need a Kikazaru Ring to counter the effect of curses. This is because a side effect of Soul Mental that will apply a random curse on you whenever a totem dies. Finally, we also need a self flagellation Jewel that grants up to 20% increased damage for each curse on you. Thanks to Soul Mental, you'll be always with around 9 curses, resulting on 180% increased damage. For clear speed, this build gets 9 out of 10. Arc is an awesome skill that chains through many enemies and easily clear big packs. This build counts with 4 totems casting this amazing skill. The boss damage deserves 9 out of 10. With the right debuffs and all 4 totems summoned, this build can take even big bosses down without any issue. For the survivability, I would also give it 9 out of 10. As a totem build, you always be far from action while your totems do all the work. So, if you know how to mind your position, you can easily complete high tier maps with low grade gear. Above all, this build still counts with high armor and high block chance. Next, on place number 5, we have this build that is so OP that deserves a heavy nerf the Venom Gyre Dead Eye with the Ranger class. Venom Gyre is a very interesting skill which fires a projectile that hits enemies and returns to you, piercing and dealing damage to everything on its path. When the projectile successfully returns to you, you can keep and stack them up to 30 times and they will all be released at once when you use the Whirling Blades movement skill. To list the pros of this build, I wouldn't even know where to start. It comes with an amazing clear speed, boss damage and a big effective HP. Above all, it's cheap and easy to put together, it doesn't require any mandatory unique item. Now, to list the cons is the real challenge here. It's hard to find something not to like on this build. However, I would say that as most builds, this one is also vulnerable to Chaos damage, unless of course you invest on Chaos Resistance gear. As for budget, this build is cheap. You can get it destroying early endgame maps with only around 90 Chaos. To comfortably advance to yellow maps, you need to invest around 120 Chaos, and for easily completing your atlas, I recommend investing around 4 Divines. For clear speed, I'll give this build 10 out of 10. The Venom Gyre projectile already has an expensive nature for the amount of time it stays dealing damage on screen. Now, with a dead eye that grants a lot of speed and many buffs to projectiles, the result is what you're seeing on this tier 16 gameplay. The boss damage is also a 10 out of 10. You can use Vol Venom Gyre to instantly have 50 stacked projectiles and delete bosses with an amazing shotgun effect using Whirling Blades on them. It's just unreal, and I can't believe it wasn't nerfed again. For this survivability, I'll give it 9 out of 10. This build counts with over 80,000 effective HP because of high armor, high evasion, spell suppression, and block chance. Finally, in 4th place, we have this ultra tanky build that can also be fast and strong, the Bone Shatter Juggernaut with the Marauder class. This build is perfect for the melee enthusiasts out there. Bone Shatter hits enemies so hard that it hurts your own character accumulating trauma stacks. 
For each trauma you're going to deal and take more damage. That's why it's important to gather both attack speed and armor to stack many traumas and sustain their damage. To reach the pros of this build I would start with its survivability. Even though you deal damage to yourself this build has so much armor that you won't feel a thing. Now because of that you might think that this build had to sacrifice speed or boss damage, but no, it is still super fast and can kill guardians in just a few seconds. Now, to list the cons, the first thing that comes to mind is that you need to keep an eye on your accuracy. This is because the Keystone precise technique that grants 40% more damage if your accuracy is bigger than your life. As for budget, this build is cheap. You can get it destroying early in game maps with only around 60 chaos. To comfortable advance to yellow maps, I recommend investing around 120 chaos, and for easily completing your atlas, I recommend investing around 4 divines. For clear speed I'll give it 9 out of 10. Bone Shatter also creates a big pulse of damage when stunning enemies. That means that a single blow can kill an entire pack of monsters. Other than that you stack a lot of attack speed that causes your lips land to almost teleport you through the map. The boss damage is also great and deserves 9 out of 10. Using Berserk on bosses causes you to accumulate a lot of trauma stacks and deal huge amounts of damage. For this survivability this build is surely a 10 out of 10, and I would even like to say 20 out of 10 if I could. This build achieves almost 200,000 armor and over 83% of all elemental resistance. All of that combined with the Juggernaut Ascendancy grants this character over 300,000 effective HP. Yes, it's crazy. And that's it for today guys, have you played any of those builds during this league? Please don't forget to share your experience in the comments and leave a thumbs up to support the channel. I wish you guys an amazing day and don't forget to keep building!